morning guys and welcome back to my Facebook live stream. My name is Jimmy Chang. I'm a professional photographer, filmmaker and an Olympus ambassador. So if you're new here, this live stream is all about, yes, of course, photography, filmmaking and Michael Forther, especially Olympus. Thank you. Welcome back. Good morning, Ralph. Good morning, people. And yes, welcome, welcome. Um, today I'm going to have a geeky talk again about a camera that I really fond with ever since it was launched three years ago. And uh, well, the reason why I want to do this live stream is because I am about to make a review video, another one, yes, uh, for uh, some time in the future on my YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> and I cannot guarantee when that will become and I've already written the scripts and everything like that and uh, it's just whether I will have the time to film it uh, so but you know I'm trying, still trying to get back to my uh, routine of video making and also uh, getting back to my channel properly um, as you know lockdown has taken a big toll on my creativity and also like uh, 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 my flexibilities and freedoms into uh, video making which is something that I, I, I really hoping at some point I will be adjusting myself with my, you know, especially with kids at home because, uh, uh, you know, during this lockdown period, they have no school and then they're staying at home and they make the whole video productions extremely challenging. But anyway, so how are you guys? Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Roman. Wow, everybody's here. Excellent stuff. Yes, you've seen the title. Yes, I'm going to talk about this camera here. It is the Olympus. OMD EM10 Mark III. Then I have it right here on my hand as well, exactly the same thing as the picture. It's a silver model. And I'm going to tell you why this is such a special camera and whether it is still a relevant camera in 2020. And uh, of course, I don't want to repeat too much on what I'm going to say in my review video, which is coming. You have to stay tuned on my YouTube channel, Red35 Photography. Remember to click that bell notification and subscribe to my channel so that you know when that video comes out. So, but today is more like a preview of what I'm going to talk about in my review, if that makes sense. You know, it might sound a little bit weird, but anyway, um, the, uh, it's all good, it's all good. So I can see that. I have a pro lens attached to the EM10 Mark III and the reason I do that because I want to tell you that even though the Olympus has labeled this camera as an entry level uh, camera on the Olympus OMD lineup because they have other entry level cameras such as the EPL series um, but because it is an Olympus it has two things there first is excellent colors and this is by far one of the most important thing as a creative right you know photographer or filmmaker you know and um, color is very very important especially for skin tones yeah things that you're seeing right now you know is streaming directly from my m one x i have not done anything to it although i did tweak the shadow a little bit uh, to make it a little bit flatter uh, but overall i think the skin tone is very true to life and this is why i like olympus products in general you know regardless what model it is and uh, i mean i have used other brands before i mean canon of course they're very known for their skin tones and and also color signs behind it uh, i don't i don't think there are any others that are come close to it in terms of uh, colors uh, and skins in you know, the colors uh, uh, i think olympus and canon are kind of equal in that terms you know um, i can't really compare between the two they are there are subtle differences between the two but in terms of naturalness how it comes across the screen is definitely these two are the best colors i've seen so far fuji i adore the colors but they are a little bit too um how would i say it uh, how would i say it the fuji uh, fuji color is definitely more filmic it's more to their uh, traditional uh, film negative stock kind of look if you know what i mean if you are from the film era you probably would appreciate what i what i just said but if you're not it basically it's not actually that accurate to true to life skin tones uh, because the, it's, it's it's got the fuji color in it <laughs> It's really, really hard to describe. I mean, but don't get me wrong, I love that color because I used to be a Fuji film uh, a shooter. And uh, uh, so I, I really love the, the, the tones from the, uh, let's say, uh, the, uh, 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 the negatives and also, or also stuff from Fuji film. So I, I'd li I like the look of it. But in terms of, let's say, if you want to create something uh, 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 completely flat and also like we redo the color profiles in post productions you may want something that is true to life to start with without having to do too much uh, what I would call it the color corrections both for both photos and videos before you apply any other any other presets and, and things like that and uh, uh, so anyway 
So let's see you. Um, good morning, everybody. And it's very, very nice to see you guys all coming here. Sorry, my son just screamed in front of me. <laughs> and uh, and uh, yeah, he's laughing right now just because he just caught my attention. That's what happened when you have kids at home. This is exactly why I said, you know, about creating content is extremely difficult in uh, at home, especially when you're two young kids here. Okay, so. So the, uh, I'll go back to the camera again. So uh, the reason why I slap on the pro lens here, I just want to tell you that uh, as soon as you put in a really good optics onto the camera, you know, and this has become a professional tool. And why would I say that though? Because it can produce as good, if not better, than most uh, 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 like similar price range photographs out there, sort of cameras out there on the market. Uh, simply because I already mentioned about the color science. And secondly, is the IBIS, right? This this thing does have five axis stabilizations. So the, the IBIS is actually really good. It may not be as good as, let's say, the latest generation of EM5 Mark III or the EM1 Mark III, Mark, even Mark II, but it is a five axis stabilization, which means that you can do all sorts of things. But having said that, and then um, the, uh, the IBIS, the five axis, yeah, and uh, only works well in uh, photo modes, in video modes, however, even though the five axis is there, but the digital stabilization, which is uh, in, if you're familiar with it, on the, both the EM5 Mark III and also the EM1 uh, um, uh, Mark III and X, they have MIS-1, MIS-2, diff two different digital stabilizations options you can choose for videoing. But on the EM10 Mark III, however, it only has MIS-2, which is sensors only. There's no digital stabilization. That means that the footage will not be as stable as the other two. Uh, so that's, that's kind of the only difference. But if you are a primary steel shooter, and which I think this camera is still a very, very good photographic tool in 2020. Uh, so it's, 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 it's something to, 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 to be pretty proud of. If you, if you have this camera, I don't think you should be shy about it. You know, I don't think that you you can uh, you uh, 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 you know you should say that this is a 2017 cameras or anything like that because I know a lot of people use the EM10 Mark III and they still use it for a lot of purposes. I've seen great photographs that they produce. And uh, it, another thing about the EM10 though is that uh, if you are really a I would say an amateur and also uh, someone who like to do travel photography, the EM10 is actually a very, very good option. Apart from that, you know, if you want to be photographing your kids running in play, playgrounds and uh, trying to do occasional uh, pet photography, you know, something that's moving relatively quick, the EM10 may not be the option simply because it's still using an aging uh, contrast detect AF systems and uh, for point to point it's quick enough, but for continuous tracking it's definitely not there and also uh, not quite as uh, uh, fast to respond to moving subjects, so uh, you can you can almost forget about you know uh, the uh, uh, doing vlogging with this camera, even though it shoots fantastic 4K videos, but unfortunately the AF just doesn't quite live up to it. So you have to use manual focus, for instance, to compensate that. But unless you are operating the camera yourself, you know, for filming, that's okay. But if you want to film yourself, this is when the auto face tracking thing comes quite in, uh, quite handy, like what I'm doing right now. I don't have to man the camera or have a second person that control the focus for me. Excellent stuff. And uh, so I do have a couple of questions here. Let's, let's bring it in. And uh, first of all, um, yes, you said the EM10 Mark III can take 1080 and 60p footage. Correct, you can do that. And also you can do HD, not full HD, which means 720p, uh, 120 frames slow motion. So by today's standard, it's definitely a little bit dated now because uh, uh, all the latest crop of OMD cameras, the EM5 Mark III and the EM1 uh, Mark III, can do uh, full HD and 120 frames per second, so it's another step up. Uh, but the slow mode, you can call it, you know, like the occasion fill in and things like that. But you can definitely see the difference between the 1080 and the 720, especially 120 frames per second. But the, the 1080 mode 60p is actually pretty cool. You know, is I like, I, I really do like that. And also one thing that you may want to uh, look into if you are considering uh, uh, using the uh, the EM10 Mark III as a video filming camera, uh, if you are also considering thinking about 4K, uh, the 4K options in the OMD EM10 OMD, EM Mark III uh, is fairly limited because you are restricted to only 25 frames per second for UK and 30 frames per second in the US or anywhere else who use NTSC. Uh, the, so it's, it's very restrictive and uh, 
not that I'm, I'm saying that because the, the higher end cameras can only shoot 25, 20, 30 or 24 anyway. But then the thing is you don't have the cinematic kind of frame rate, the 24, which I tend to use and also high bit rate, you know, which is the Cine 4K, which you don't have that in this particular option. So I guess, you know, for 1080 production, this is actually a not, you know, not a bad option at all. And, uh, <laughs> and you do need 120 frame per second. It's fun, you know, I have to say, but you know, it, do, it does have it, but it's only in, for, in only HD option, 720. You know, and uh, if, you've seen, if you haven't seen my review before on my YouTube, and uh, you see the sample uh, uh, slow motion pictures there, and, uh, it, it's a fun thing, and it's a little bit soft by today's standards, only because it's 720, when you scale it up to a 1080 uh, 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 timeline or 4K timeline, you will see that, you know, it's definitely not up to uh, uh, the sharpness level that uh, people are expecting in 2020. And that's for sure. And Mark, you're asking whether you want to go for the EM10 Mark III or the EM5 Mark II. Right, um, that's interesting question because the, uh, there, there aren't much to separate between these two cameras here. Uh, in terms of still photographing capabilities. Although having said that the EM5 Mark II does have a lot more manual features that is not available with the EM10 Mark III. So uh, if you are still a pretty much a hands-on guy that you know your way out uh, in uh, in and out about photography, uh, like ISO, aperture, and all, all, the, all the exposure triangle, it's probably better buying the EM5 Mark III for few reasons. Well, first of all, I already mentioned manual override, so you do have more manual features uh, uh, from the cam, uh, from the uh, EM5 Mark II. Second, it has slightly, I think, slightly better uh, uh, the IBIS uh, on both photo and definitely on video, because on video you can use MIS-1. So the, uh, this is something I already told you, the EM10 uh, the, uh, the EM Mark III doesn't have uh, MIS-1 feature. And then third is also about the uh, audio option. So if you do use the uh, a camera for video features like filmmaking, if you want to plug in an external mic, the uh, the EM5 Mark II has a microphone jack. You know the EM10 doesn't. So that means you have to record and sync it in post. And uh, something that if you are not very familiar with, and you want you want the convenience of having the audio burnt into the audio file, sorry, the video file, then you may want to go for the EM5 Mark II as well. And overall, I think the, the, uh, the EM5 Mark II is still, you know, even though the EM10 Mark III uh, uh, is newer uh, compared to the EM5 Mark II, but it, the EM5 Mark II is still a little bit better than EM5, uh, EM10 Mark III. But there is still a price difference there because EM10 now in the UK, especially going for around about, I don't know, 400 and something pound. Uh, body only, and then the EM5 Mark II, even though they're still selling on the on the market, is going still going for about six seven hundred quid. So there's still about two hundred odd pounds difference between the two. Uh, but also, yeah, you gain the metal body and also weather sealing from the EM5 Mark II as well. So it depends what sort of thing you're going for. Um, let's see. Roman actually has something here. Has Panasonic a better codec? I would like to have a smaller file for video. I think they. If for the same pricing bracket, I think they're very equal and I don't see much differences between the two. And uh, so you don't have to worry about file size because the, the EM10 Mark III um, uh, and the EM5 Mark III Kodak is the same as the, the, the lower end uh, Panasonic cameras. They're all using uh, uh, the same MP4. So it's, it's very comparable, I would say, you know, and, uh, and in terms of colors, I still would prefer the Olympus, which I already said it many times, and the, the Olympus colors are definitely better than Panasonic, you know, and, uh, uh, but this is preferential, this is personal. I mean, I do personally prefer the colors from, from the Olympus cameras. That means in, in post-production, I don't have to do too much color corrections, for instance, and because uh, uh, I, I really hate color corrections. <laughs> and that's the fact, you know, like uh, 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 whenever I do a video editing, you know, like I, I want something that I could straight away just work with the colors. I don't have to, you know, spend time in correcting, especially if you do a longer video, for instance, if you shoot multiple scenes, for instance, and it's multiple people in different time of the day, you want something that looks natural. You don't want to mess around with the color corrections and spending a lot of time in looking at different scenes and trying to match them and trying to do this and that. And that takes a lot of time. And that's before you even try to apply any effects to it. So uh, uh, because color correction is almost usually the first step in editing, you know, apart from the timeline stuff. But then, um, uh, so I, I, I really would prefer something that saved me a lot of time, which in this case, Olympus does the job really well in terms of colors. So, and that 
you know, for me, worth a lot of money just because of the colors. Cool stuff. And uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> yes, you can make them the same. And uh, and but having said that, you know, like uh, I completely understand what Roman was saying. You know, because uh, you in Panasonic camera, especially in the high end cameras, uh, the GH5 or the G9, even uh, you can select different codecs. You can select different compressions, uh, 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 different sampling, for instance. And uh, it has a lot of options there. Olympus camera doesn't have that. The Olympus camera is relatively simple, and uh, basically is is you can almost call it a point and shoot video camera because uh, it, all you need to do is just click that. Uh, 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 record button and it would just off and go you can just go and and shoot your video which is actually fantastic options right and uh okay and i want to show you some examples i took uh because because uh, i want another thing that i would like to say that in, even though i have a lot of olympus camera in the house uh, the em10 has always been in my family back for some reason because uh well, not some reason it's actually for good reasons because it's a uh, you know it's a very capable steel camera which i always use it to snap around uh, and my kids and things like that uh, yeah i have a lot of different options and choices to choose from depending on what sort of scenario i use and i think I'm one of the lucky ones to be in the position that I have lots of cameras to play with, especially in the Olympus side. Um, so, but uh, the EM10 is always there for me. Uh, uh, so, so I want to show you some of the family photos that I took. Even though for family trips, I also do that as well. So let's just show you, you know, like these photos, I, oh, this is not a great one, but I'll show you anyway. And, uh, uh, you know, I, did, I took a, a couple of years ago with, uh, on a trip to uh, the Isle of Wight, and it was really, uh, really great day to be honest but it, it just shows that you know uh, even though that the uh, uh, the camera sensors is a little bit older than the current crop of cameras but it's still a very very capable and also I mentioned this so many times in photography it isn't really the the the, the camera that limits you is almost about your creativity uh, you know yes there are faster processors out there there are uh, larger files the higher megapixels high resolutions but Ultimately, it's your lens and your camera. You know, if you've got a great lens, it, it will always perform regardless, right? And then in terms of camera, yes, you may be limited by 16 megapixel, but frankly, you know, for the stuff that I do, uh, the, uh, for family and things like that, you know, you don't really need, you know, a high-end processors to, uh, to make myself happy, you know, because what you want is a lightweight system, which this is really lightweight, and then uh, uh, the basically would not weigh me down when I'm going away with families and I will be still be able to enjoy uh, my time with the kids and the family, you know, like, so I, my camera back is lighter, so smaller, and uh, yeah, I'll be able to walk around and still take relatively good uh, video, like I mentioned, because I, you know, I shoot everything in menu anyway, so I'm able to still use menu focus on this camera and take video, so I don't have to rely on the autofocus so much, even though like, yes, Today's cameras is way better than autofocus, and 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 you can always just relying on it. Just set it to continuous AF and tracks faces and all sorts of like gizmos and you know wheels and uh, whistles and bells and things like that. So they are good, but uh, yeah, I'm still pretty much a hands-on guy when it comes to filmmaking. So that's that's not a bad thing to do. So uh, let's see another one here, and uh, yeah, that was a very dull day. That's why I just but I was actually just you know having fun because the kids were actually on the beach. I'm gonna show you some beach pictures and then. Uh, like these ones here, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that was a couple of years ago. I can't believe how quickly they grow. I'm telling you, and uh, but you know, it's it's just fun, you know. And then I, I, I that's something I like about uh, you know having a camera with you all the time, and regardless where you go, you know when you go, it's always something there ready to shoot. And this is exactly what the EM10 is for. Uh, uh, if you are a an avid uh, travelers and also uh, someone who just enjoy going around snapping photos every day, so. Um, okay, <laughs> I can see Ralph said that uh, I 180 frames someday. Uh, yes, I am actually thinking that uh, may come, you know, in the very near future, you know, because things are moving that direction now and the people are pushing the envelope uh, in terms of frame rate per second and, uh, and stuff. Hang on a second. Uh, oh. I thought I thought something happened to my program because my my Mac has a beach ball spinning. I thought something was happening horribly, but isn't. It's actually still working, so that's fine. Um, uh, let's see. So uh, we just continue seeing what other photos I can show you here. Uh, there you go. That's another photograph of my, of my daughter here, just like really posing for me. Uh, it's just fantastic, right? You know, I just love these little time here with my little camera. You know, that's that's fantastic. So. Okay, let me 
do another thing that I always do with, uh, uh, not always do, but I do recently, is to utilize my wireless setup. Let's head over to the garden and have some nice chat. I'm gonna bring my, uh, I'm gonna bring my, of course, phone with me so I can see all the comments coming out. So let's head out for a uh, talk. So let me just close this off. So let's, let's go there. Right, okie dokie. Okay. Right, hopefully you guys can still see me. And then, uh, right, I can still see myself, that's good. Hey, it's a little bit dark, but I'll adjust it in a minute. So uh, let me know if you can't hear me or see me for whatever reasons, and I will have to go back in to adjust something. But uh, let's see, I actually set it to F. F, uh, ooh, I set it to quite harsh. Okay, okay, let's see. I got it in relatively good, yep. Yeah. I think I'm good. Excellent stuff. Cool. Ah, right. Okay, so I'm out in the garden once again because uh, it's getting a little bit warm. Also getting a bit loud because my kids were, you can obviously hear, uh, hurt them, you know, screaming in the background. So let's see uh, what I have in right here. So let's see. Oh, Luigi, <laughs> you're joining me. Fantastic. That's good. So I'm actually reading. Uh, 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 I'm able to read comments live now because I'm, I'm tuning to myself so I can actually see everybody. So ex excellent stuff. So what do you think, what do you guys think about the EM10 Mark III and, uh, and, and what sort of thing that you may possibly want to see the next generation come to? The reason I'm actually saying that because uh, uh, if you're looking at the product cycle from Olympus, uh, the EM10 Mark III now is uh, almost three years old now. Almost, and as actually I could say three years ago now because it was launched in 2017, September. So yes, it's almost three years uh, exactly. In fact, you know, the announcement, they were probably about a month before that. So yes, it's, an, it's about three years old. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a little bit long in the tooth now. And it's, I think it's due for an update very, very soon. But don't quote me on anything. I'm speculating it, of course. Uh, but if you are uh, having some sort of uh, wish list to see what, uh, what the next EM10 uh, is going to become, you know, uh, let me know in the comment section or even let me know now see what sort of thing you may want to see. Uh, get my vitamin D, Mark. <laughs> Indeed, I desperately need some vitamin D. That's what I'm handing up now, putting my hand out in the sun. Uh, and I uh, have vitamin D supplement because uh, that's what the government doctors have suggested. You should take supplement because we'll be staying indoor more than usual because of the lockdowns and so forth. Uh, yeah. I actually enjoyed it, you know, and uh, enjoy this kind of outdoor talk that we're doing right now. And uh, I'm going to do more of this because I think it's actually better than sitting inside in the, in my, you know, in, in, in the living room, you know, with the kids screaming. And that's not the major problem, but also sitting down like constantly every single day can be a problem for your back, especially. Uh, right. Roman and... <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. You actually said that the Casio Exlim um, FH100. The 10.1 megapixel camera still selling for 270 bucks on eBay. And uh, it has high speed video cap is whoa, okay, wow, that that's that's amazing, right? But you know, Castle Castle is a it's a gadget company, I would say. And so like a lot of things that people may seem gimmicky at a time, but over time, you know, people starting to appreciate that sort of gimmicks and then becoming a normality and people just think it's a cool thing to do now. Um, and uh, so it's, it's something that is really cool. So like, okay, Mark has something to say here. Uh, they call me shallow, but I want the Mark IV to have a, the pointy prism from the OM1. Ooh, you are talking about the styling. I think they're gonna keep the, the, the same form factor, that's for sure. Uh, Cause I, I kind of agree with you. Cause uh, the, the, the EM1 Mark II and Mark III, you know, the, the top housing is a bit more pointy. So it's more of the film OM camera look. The, Olymp uh, the, o the OMD EM10 Mark II and III, the prism housing is a little bit rounded. So it's like more, almost like a dome shape with just a little crease, uh, creases there. So yeah, I, I kind of agree with you because the, the pointy look does make it just a little bit more old school. And, uh, and I do appreciate that. I think that will be a, it may not be a bad option. And then Brad, uh, you also say may be tough to improve the EM10 at the price point without treading on EM5 sales. Uh, that is a very good point. And I do believe that uh, that is also one of the main reasons why uh, 
the uh, Olympus hasn't really put in too much effort into the, uh, uh, or, or implementing features on the EM10 series because uh, if they put in, let's say, you put in mic jacks into it, putting MIS-1 into it, uh, uh, putting a better AF into it, it, it essentially is a EM5 Mark III without weather sealing. And would you pay you know, a few hundred pounds more just for the weather seal? So that this, this could be the sticking point there you know, for Olympus, whether they uh, or how they are going to still keep the line draw between a entry level camera and an enthusiast level uh, a camera. I think the EM5 is certainly a very, very capable camera. And I don't want uh, uh, you know, the, the line being mixed up between the two because it's obviously clearly they're aiming for a different market. Having said that, you know, and it's a quite a tough line to draw as well because you have seen recently there are lots of uh, so-called vlogging cameras come out. Sony just re uh, released one, even though it's a compact camera, but in terms of features, is it's, it really is treading onto the EM5 territories, uh, even though it's a fairly expensive camera on its own. But it's a compact camera, so it, it's, it's something that I think for Olympus is. You know, it's going to be a very tough decision for the Mark IV uh, or subsequent successors for the EM10 line. So how they're going to develop it um, in terms of features and, and uh, you know, uh, uh, how they can differentiate between the consumer entry level cameras to an enthusiast level camera. That's something that for them to think about. And uh, Roman also say more connectivity like one click to Instagram will be cool for future cameras. Yep. I think the possibility is there. Uh, if they can utilize Bluetooth technologies on the new, uh, new level cameras, uh, that will be good because it's an instant connection. It may be called also be implemented as a always on in, uh, connections. And that would mean that you can have the ability to connect the OI Share app almost continuously and constantly, and you will be able to basically click and share straight away. Uh, but I'm not entirely sure about, uh, 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 you know, you, you know, and uh, I, I personally would like to, you know, do a lot of taggings and stuff like that before I sent out to the Instagram. So it's something that I would probably still want to involve some sort of manual process, for instance. But I guess what you mean, if, and, and having Bluetooth features on the EM10 Mark III would definitely enhance the shareability uh, and connectivity. Because uh, once you take the photo, almost it's like tether. So the image will send directly to your smartphone or other smart devices, and you can have it on the camera roll. Uh, you can just pull it up, you know, whenever or wherever you want to share that particular photos. So that is that would be something that I think will be implemented very soon because I, I, I think this is also one of the points to set up from the uh, 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 entry level cameras to the enthusiast level camera because entry level cameras is all about people who want ease of use, shareability uh, uh, and also for these like social media crowds out there. So the more enthusiast level cameras like the EM5, the EM1, they are more aiming for people who like to process the photo for instance and this is something that uh, I think uh, 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 you know they worry less about instant sharing for instance so I guess these are uh, features that on the EM10 also let's say the EPL pen, uh, pen lines would be uh, uh, the target market so they would these sort of features would definitely be appealing for those customers that's cool uh, what else I wanted to talk about now and let's see is there have I missed anything else from here no I think it's good I've caught up. There's not many comments here, though that's fine. And uh, I actually did a poll uh, on my. Uh, oh, it's a little bit underexposed. Let me just turn it up a little bit here. Uh, I did a poll on my YouTube community page just this morning. So if you are uh, happy to do some voting, that will be for tomorrow's topics. Is what is the most popular uh, Olympus cameras in 2020? So uh, uh, it's based on your poll. And see, I just want to see who has. Uh, what cameras and, and in terms of the percentage why and kind of why is that so if you have a certain uh, Olympus camera you want to make a vote onto my community page please head down to my YouTube channel page there's a community tab there so click on it you'll see my two posts there because uh, I separate into two posts only because there are uh, uh, each post can only allow me to do five uh, uh, items for you know setting up the voting so obviously there are more than five uh, current cameras that's on sale for Olympus so I have to separate separate into two different posts so cool stuff right okay let's see Roman has something as well okay what do you think of HDR processing in camera and uh, I mean adjusting saturation brightness on the screen and not in pose like an app uh, 
to be frank, I don't do much HDR myself, and uh, I know you can you can do something on the camera, and to be quite frank, I haven't really utilized it. And on the EM10, I think there is a HDR features, which kind of like, is more like a filter, uh, 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 just boosting the shadow and kind of suppressing the highlight and increasing the, the contrast of the lines and kind of mesh up together into like a pot of instant noodles, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, I'm not entirely sure, and uh, if I ever gonna create HDR, I would still do it the proper way. And I don't think anything artificial uh, or computation photography uh, 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 is just good or pleasing to your eyes, you know, for in terms of HDR photos. And frankly, I'm not really a HDR guy, uh, HDR guy anyway. And in terms of photography, uh, for video, uh, when they when they say HDR, is not like a photography uh, HDR is more about higher dynamic range and so you can capture a bit more highlight like you know like situations like this when I'm in a very very high contrast scene and the light is going to be strong again and then uh, uh, you really want to uh, mm. making sure there's a, there's no clipping both in shadow and highlight so you, you get a much better scene to work with uh, so you know in, in video terms HDR is very very different compared to the photography because the look is so different HDR terms in video is more natural and then uh, it just means that you've got more information to work with ultimately for your production work. Um, okay, that's cool stuff. Let's see. Something fun. <laughs> okay, good stuff. So I caught up everything. So remember, you can head up to my YouTube uh, uh, community page to, uh, let's say, uh, uh, to do a vote on whatever camera you have. Uh, there will be good fun talk again tomorrow. I'm pretty sure that I'm, like, for the last, three weeks now every week i've been talking like a minimum of one hour 45 minutes sometimes over two hours long and 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 frankly by the end of that talk yeah every wednesday i lost my voice you know like i couldn't really talk for a couple of hours and i always had to whisper to my kids <laughs> and that's how much talking i was doing and uh, it'll be amazed how 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 much you know in terms of uh, 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 how much work involved in in actual live talking like this but it's, it's actually fun because i like to uh, uh interact with everybody and uh, it's, it's a fun way to communicate uh it, you know it's, it seems to be the communication uh, method these days right and uh, especially since the lockdown is through video communications and uh, through textings and through everything like that you know it's, it feels normal these days just to talk like this but I kind of, I kind of get used to it. I get, uh, it's, it's very fun, excellent stuff. And um, oh, Nelson Tam, hi Nelson. Haven't seen you for a while. Hopefully you're good. Uh, how's Hong Kong, by the way? I hope everything is uh, is okay there. And I uh, would like to uh, come back at some point whenever things got settled down because uh, you know everything's going on. You know, it's just unbelievable at the moment. So I would like to come back to say hi to you know all of you guys, all my friends in Hong Kong and especially see my dad as well who is still in Hong Kong at the moment and I just can't wait you know for this travel restriction to be lifted so I, I will be able to travel again because I have projects to do which involving me traveling and at the moment I just don't or cannot actually do anything because of the restrictions um, it feels a bit sad you know the, the, because uh, I'm so used to moving around uh, just uh, yeah you know, I'm, I'm an outdoor guy. I, I cannot, I cannot stay in, you know, in in the house for too long. <laughs> but now, you know, I, I'm stuck here for like two and a half months now, nearly three months. So it's just a, it's a weird feeling when it comes to it. But having said that, uh, it also forced me to uh, do something different, like what I'm doing now, live streaming. You know, I haven't really doing proper live streaming before March, before the lockdown began, and uh, this is something absolutely totally new for me and I, I'm, I'm actually quite enjoying it now especially that I have developed a good uh, a, a good community and also a, a good group of friends that you know who are coming on every single day you know talk, talking to me which is like you know you guys are absolutely fantastic I just love uh, talking to you and uh, it's, it's good to you know wake up to or looking forward to something every day you know like you know when you wake up you know I'm, oh I know I'm going to talk to you know Ralph I'm not going to talk to Mark I'm not going to talk to Burana and all the other people that you know in, in the chat here you know so it's fantastic uh, announce before come back please <laughs> Yes, I shall do. I shall do. And, um, you know, I should have done it, you know, and uh, in January, because that's where I came back in January this year, uh, just just before the lockdown began. And uh, I'm, I'm telling you, so it, it's a shame that, you know, I, I couldn't meet a lot of you guys. And uh, I'm pretty certain next time I'll do that because now I have this live stream going on. So I'll be able to update you uh, very frequently. 
So you just have to stay tuned for you know my talks because I will talk about something like today. Uh, what I'll talk about EM10 because I'm going to make a video about EM10 uh, for my YouTube very soon. So uh, you want to stay tuned for it. And uh, uh, if you're into this camera and also want to have a say about what the next generation should be, uh, it's your choice and it's your time to do it. So look, looking forward to my my next video on YouTube. Remember to subscribe, put a bell notification so you know that come uh, when that comes out. Excellent stuff. Uh, okay, I'm going to end my stream very soon now. And uh, anything else you may want to ask me or anything is time is now the time. If not, I'm going to just say some promotional stuff like my buy my coffee link. And then is it that way? Yes, it is that way. No, this way. I mean, I have to see because it's got about a like, five second delay here for my phone and for my screen. And uh, I just have to see which way it is. Oh, no, it's not that way. It's, it's definitely this way. Yes, it's definitely this way. That's my, that's my buy my coffee link there. So promotional stuff done. And then uh, also just want to say once again, thank you for joining me in my live stream. Oh God. Okay. One problem about live streaming outdoor is I got hay fever. <laughs> it's really bad hay fever too. Oh God. I wanted to sneeze. Oh, not a good feeling. This like this is the problem when you do live, right? You know, like in, if you do a video YouTube, yeah, you can cut this bit off, <laughs> and I cannot cut it at the moment, especially that I'm away from the computer. <laughs> so every unpleasant stuff that you see now is definitely live. <laughs> oh gosh, I want to sneeze. I I definitely don't want to sneeze in front of the camera. So I bet I, I better oh, I better go inside. <laughs> <laughs> right, one second, I'm going to take my camera back and say goodbye to you guys properly. And, uh, right, okay, let me just, uh, there we go. Ooh la la. Okay, so I'm back indoor. How's the live stream, by the way? If you like that, remember that this is uh, the live stream uh, kit that I'm using is from um, uh, the Holy Land. Uh, okay, let's see. Okay, I'm, okay, right. My camera and my, for some reasons, my streaming program is stuck. Oh dear me. Right. Okay, what is going on here? And uh, right. Okay, it's back. Yes, I'm back. I'm back. Fantastic. Right, I'm back here. That's good stuff. For some reason, I think my uh, uh, my my computer has overheated. And then, then uh, it's everything just stuck and stopped for some reason. Right, cool. And uh, oh gosh, it's still it's still very itchy my nose, and I uh, really can't really can't uh, can't stay outdoor for too long. And uh, uh, yeah, I, mean, I have you can see that I have uh, I have my medicine here. I have an allergy nose sprays. Is everything ready for my hay fever? And uh, that's how bad I am. And in fact. Uh, my hay fever gets so severe, you know, like uh, sometime I couldn't even work. I'm, I'm not joking, you know, I have this itchy eyes, nose, uh, skin and everything. And then uh, I'll feel extremely tired as well. And uh, it's really draining sometimes. Um, but staying indoor during this lockdown actually helped to mitigate uh, some of these problems that I have uh, for, for hay fever. So it's not may not be as bad as uh, as uh, 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 as you might think. And uh, last year, definitely worse to, uh, this year. It's only happening in the last couple of days because the the uh, the sun has been shining for the last four weeks now, and uh, so a lot of the grass are quite dried up. So there's a lot of pollens uh, flying around and definitely affecting my my uh, uh, nose and my eyes. So, uh, oh gosh, <laughs> and the live live stream gadget has also allergy. <laughs> you might be right, Roman. You might be right. And uh, thanks, Brad. Uh, I like your high key live stream. <laughs> well, thank you guys, thank you, and uh, yeah, thank you for your understanding. You know, being live is is definitely horrible. You know, when it comes to this sort of thing, you know, if something unexpected happen, like you know, sneezing and stuff like that, definitely not good. And I'm telling you, when I sneeze, I sneeze bad. So like, you definitely do not want to see me sneeze. It's it's horrible. You know, one of those people like who sneeze like ten or twelve times at uh, at a time. You know, like you know, continuously. This is me, you know, like I, I, if I sneeze, I was just sneeze non-stop for a good minute and I would not be able to talk, you know, you see things running out, you know, oh, you really don't want to see my, okay, okay, I better stop here now. I know it's going to be disgusting soon. So, uh, so, 
I will stop it right here and uh, thank you once again for joining my live stream and don't forget tomorrow is going to be uh, my uh, YouTube live as well so go ahead and uh, make the poll and let me know what is your camera or that you own at the moment and maybe if you're, if you're kind enough let me know some reasons behind it as well then that will be awesome. Fantastic. So I will end here and I shall speak to you all again tomorrow morning will be another topic will be another thing to talk about so I shall see you all. Have a good day wherever you are and enjoy the sun. Bye for now.